market. If I created million dollar businesses from sewing, you can do anything. Tap into your passion for career ideas, plus home office, fashion, and colors that'll boost your mood. I'm out of my pajamas. Feeling good. Then these clever apps organize your work breaks with de-stressing activities. This app notifies you to look away from your computer. But first, there's an ease and a flow to it more than there is a struggle. Free yourself of old adages about success. That's at the top of our list right now. Hey everyone, I'm Christina Guerrero. And I'm Shaguna Dulo, and today we're gonna work it by focusing on our jobs and careers. That's right, now most of us have grown up with traditional wisdom that we believe will help us become successful. That's right, and some of what we've learned makes sense, but not all of it. In fact, Jimmy Rhodes says a lot of us end up carrying around false beliefs that become obstacles to our growth. So today we are knocking down the myths that hold us back, and it's our featured story at the top of the list. Humans operate partly on instinct. We want food, shelter, and status in the tribe. We are hardwired to want success. Ellie Craig's the author of Success Rebel. But how we're taught to get there is fundamentally wrong. So we have to unlearn what we've been told about achievement. You have to rebel against the misinformation and begin to understand our biology, our subconscious mind. That's when you find success. So Allie's obliterating four myths about achieving success at work and in life, starting with the idea that fairy tales are innocent. What do fairy tales tell us about success? Success is outside of you. That you need to have that fairy godmother to do that magical spell at her choosing, not yours. That you need to have people outside of you to actually make you successful. And that's completely wrong. So tell your fairy godmother to take a break because... If you think that your success is waiting on someone else to come in and save the day, you're never going to be successful. The second myth, that success is an uphill battle. We've all heard it. Success is hard. Well, when you have that mindset that that is what success is, guess what? Your subconscious mind is going to manifest that for you. Because a huge chunk of us operates at a subconscious level every day. So once you align your actions and your goals, there isn't this uphill battle or struggle. There's this natural flow to it because success is meant to be an extension of who you are, a relationship with the rest of the world. And therefore, like all good relationships, there's an ease and a flow to it more than there is a struggle. Athletes call it being in the zone. Researchers have referred to it as the flow state. And you hear contented people say it all the time. Do what you love and you'll never work a day in your life. Turns out a lot of those people work really hard. The trick is that they enjoy it. Ali's third myth of success is that notoriety is a bad thing. Status in a group is okay, but standing out too much is a risk. Biologically, notoriety means we can get kicked out of the tribe. And because our brains haven't evolved in over 20,000 years, we still have this fight or flight tribal mentality. So conformity is an instinctive attempt to fit in with the tribe. When you get to that level of success where people are looking at you, where you are are influential. Though it is what you want, biologically it is absolutely what you fear because you fear that you will get kicked out and therefore you will die. So standing out can trigger anxiety and bad choices. A lot of people tend to start self-sabotaging because their biological fears are overtaking their heart's current desires. Finally, we love the idea of an up by the bootstraps visionary, but it's a myth that success comes solo. Success is a relationship and other people exist in that relationship. Just about every big name success had a team that got them there. Success is less about them and more about the relationships they can have with the ones that they love. You don't get there alone and you don't want to be there alone. Avoiding the myths of success is at the top of the list. Well, one thing that will help you become successful is loving what you do. And that's what happened with the fashion line known as Mimi G. So we are meeting the Latina entrepreneur who turned her passion project into a multi-million dollar business. If you ever wanted to make your passion a full-time job, it really is just about what you want for your life and how hard you're willing to work for it. And that's what Mimi Ford, AKA Mimi G did. This Atlanta based entrepreneur recognized her passion of sewing at 12 years old, even though life wasn't easy. 
I come from a sort of turbulent upbringing. You know, I was homeless at 15. But for Mimi G, sewing was therapeutic, and despite the ups and downs, she focused on her passion of sewing, which turned into lifestyle brand Mimi G Style, along with Sew It Academy, which offers courses to help folks design and make their own clothes. And she's sharing her business tips for success with us. Listen, if I created million dollar businesses from sewing, you can do anything. First, be sure it's something you love. Everybody was sort of doing kids clothing, home decor, quilting, and I wasn't really into any of that. I was always sort of into fashion sewing. If I was spending time making something, I wanted to wear it. And I was having a hard time making ends meet. I was going through, I think, that moment where a lot of single moms sort of go through, where you feel stuck and scared. So she started consistently blogging and 2012 to document all the things she made and that's where Mimi G style was born. I went from you know maybe a thousand page views those first couple of months to over a million that first year. Her next tip create content that serves others. I made sewing easy to understand. I realized that women were gravitating to me. They wanted things that were going to fit their bodies so I started doing videos and honestly that's really what I think elevated me from being just a blogger to creating this huge community community that I have now. I started getting emails from women all over the world saying, you know, you've changed my life. Finally, take what you've learned and share your success. A couple years ago, I started a podcast where I give a lot of information on how to take that hobby, that passion, that side hustle, and really make a sustainable, profitable business. Do good content, produce something that you're really proud of, and above all, that it helps people. We're climbing the ladder of success with our passion projects. Until next time, peace. For months now, the IT work attire has been PJs. But while comfy and cozy has its appeal, dressing lazy can affect our mood and overall health. A couple of fashion experts told Teresa Strasser why it's important to look sharp no matter where you're working and how to do it. Most of us working from home have traded suits for pajamas. But is that a bad thing? It can have detrimental effects on our mental health. What you wear on your body affects the way you treat others and yourself. Carolyn Mayer is a professor specializing in the psychology of fashion, and Elsa Fernandez is a fashion expert and founder of Eye Candy Boutique. Together, they break down the connection between what we wear and our overall health. Starting with, why do we choose to rock the PJs? It's convenient. It's usually comfortable. It's a great way of, of managing their lives. A recent study by Adobe Analytics found that cozy wear increased more than 143% since the rise of remote work. But there's a downside to comfort. It becomes difficult to separate our work lives from our personal lives. This can lead to stress, anxiety, irritability, and the inability to get things done. Mental health and physical health are absolutely connected. When we experience these symptoms, it can lead to a sedentary lifestyle. But Carolyn says creating a routine and dressing for work can help. It can definitely improve self-esteem. It can improve performance. We turn to fashion expert Elsa to find out what to wear. It's all about the mindset of productivity versus relaxing. Elsa says focus on color. Color boosting your mood is totally true. It's called chromotherapy or colorology, and it comes from ancient Egyptian and Chinese practices. It's a type of alternative medicine which claims color can balance an individual's well-being. If you need energy, anything in the red family, the orange family, the yellow family, pretty much any color that you see in the flame of a fire, that is going to energize you. If you're feeling the opposite, you want to make sure that you're integrating blues and greens or purples into your wardrobe and that'll help you find your zen. Pretty much any colors that you find in like the ocean or the forest, that's going to help you calm your nerves. I'm out of my pajamas, feeling good. We're helping you look and feel your best. Next, I've timed out six water breaks during my work day. Digital help to keep you healthy during work. Plus, young inventors creating successful and useful products. We wanted to make a product that all kids could enjoy. And a unique work experience specifically for you. That is enjoyable and positive. We're focused on working it next. 
Welcome back to our Work It show. You know, it's tough for a lot of folks doing their jobs remotely to find the balance between concentrating and not working compulsively. Well, take a deep breath because Heidi Fogelsong has some apps to help you step away and de-stress. It's a new way to work the remote day job, balancing productivity with wellness, from learning how to manage the eye strain of daily screen time. Staring at a computer screen day in and day out can lead to fatigue, redness, and eye strain. To taking a break to stretch the body and staying hydrated throughout the day. We're showing you three work break reminder apps to keep you productive and well at the same time, starting with the 2020 Eye Care app. So this app notifies you to look away from your computer every 20 minutes at a focal point 20 feet away for 20 seconds. Get it? 2020. So whenever you get that notification, look away from your computer and do this exercise throughout your workday. The 2020 Eye Care app is free and available to download on any mobile app or computer platforms. Next, strike a pose and take a mini stretch break with the Pocket Yoga app. Pocket Yoga's vocal and visual instructions will take you through each pose, including your breathing. Plus, this app lets you choose a selection of poses and time durations for each pose. The Pocket Yoga app costs $2.99 and can be easily downloaded onto your iOS and Android devices. Finally, drink enough water with this popular app, the Hydro Coach. You start by picking your goal or set up a personal target by answering a few questions. Once you're done, you need to log the amount of fluid intake in the app. So with this app, I've timed out six water breaks during my work day. And at each break, I drink an eight ounce glass of water. The Hydro Coach app is free as well and is also available on iOS or Android phones. We're finding the work health balance in our everyday lives with these three work break reminder apps. We mostly think of adults as disruptors in the business world, but we can't count out the kids. Teresa Strasser looks at underage entrepreneurs on the buzz list. Teresa. Thanks. These young entrepreneurs have products that are flying off store shelves. First, these sharp dressed men are 12 year old Jordan and 10 year old Joshua Liebird. The Tampa, Florida duo created JL Fun Colors, which are hypoallergenic crayon toys for kids just like them. My brother and I have about 10 different food allergies, including environmental. So we wanted to make a product that all kids could enjoy. The brothers do the bookkeeping, the advertising, and help oven belt the crayons to create all sorts of themed toys. JL Fun Colors has made their way into stores with sets selling for about 10 bucks. Usually the girls like the unicorns, the hearts, and usually the boys like the dinosaurs, the Legos, and the Star Wars. Oh, and one more thing, these entrepreneurs are not just in it for the cash. They have donated dozens of sets to foster kids in their area too. Very generous kiddos. Next, South Carolina 12-year-old Gabby Goodwin, who created Gabby Bows, the first double face, double snap barrette designed to never fall out. In fact, she's putting her money where her mouth is because if one of the bows slips out, she will replace it with two bows. Gabby bows have two faces, so you can see the design both ways. Teeth and craters to trap the hair. Wrap hair around the center strip. Snap one and close, snap the other and close. No more lost bows. Her company, Confidence, has expanded to sell all sorts of hair care products that are now available at Target. Not bad for a preteen. And the third young business person making our list, 14-year-old Alina Morse. Seven years ago, she came up with the idea for Zollipop, a sweet, sugar-free lollipop that actually helps clean your teeth. And she's since added caramels, gummies, and more treats to her Zolly candy line, which is all available at stores nationwide. No surprise, she's the youngest person ever to grace the cover of Entrepreneur Magazine. I was really grateful that Entrepreneur Magazine was shining a light on, on young entrepreneurs and young people working in business and the next generation, Gen Z. Gen Z making candy healthy? Now that's pretty sweet. Young people with booming businesses on the buzz list. We've got lots more to come on the list. Stay with us. Welcome back. So the theme of our show today is Work It, and that got us thinking about some of the most memorable office managers we've seen in movies. Beastly big screen bosses on the hot list. Well, 
we probably hate to admit it, but at one point or another, a lot of us have worked for a not-so-pleasant boss. Who are you? So we're looking back at four movie bosses whose less than ideal managing ways will hopefully make your bad boss experiences seem not so bad anymore. Ooh, yeah. Starting with Bill Lumberg from the 1999 cult classic, Office Space. We have sort of a problem here. This monotonous boss with terrible taste in ties ran a software company with coffee cup in hand and little regard for the lives of his employees. I'm also going to need you to go ahead and come in on Sunday, too, okay? His quotes are so memorable, they've become viral memes in the decades since. Thanks. Now to the intimidating editor-in-chief of a high-fashion magazine, the one and only Miranda Priestly from 2006's The Devil Wears Prada. No, I'm so sorry, Miranda. I actually did concern last night. of your incompetence do not interest me. She was the ice-cold boss who expected the near impossible from her employees. If you don't have that Harry Potter book by then, don't even bother coming back. Meryl Streep nailed the character and even received an Oscar nod for her performance. Everybody wants this. Moving on to the world of animation with Gru. Okay, my toy. Steve Carell voiced this devious boss who we first met in 2010's Despicable Me. He supervised an entire army of minions who did much of his hard work in his quest to become the greatest villain in the world. No, no races. <laughs> no, I'm not going to get any uh. races. But in the end, this boss actually changed his ways thanks to his three little girls. Clink, there we go. Now we drink. Finally, the successful but brutal tech mogul from 2019's Little, Jordan Sanders. Excuse me? <gasps> Regina Hall starred as a boss notorious for tormenting her assistant April. Be awake when I call. But it, I don't know when you're going to call, so when would I sleep? When I'm not calling. Her life was turned upside down when she magically transformed into a 13-year-old version of herself. You went to bed grown and then you woke up little. An experience that changed her outlook on life and brought her closer to her employees. Looking like Cookie from Empire. For better or worse. What? These were some memorable chief executives in film on the hot list. Next on our Work It show, if doing your job from home has you feeling lost, well, we've got some help from the heavens. That's coming up. Welcome back to our Work It show. Now, while some folks are thrilled to be doing their jobs from the comfort of home, it's been a big adjustment for others, meaning they could probably use guidance from the cosmos. That's why we spoke with an astrologer for work from home tips based on your zodiac. The ongoing pandemic means many people are still working from home, so they might need some help staying motivated, and the answers could be in astrology. If you know a lot of the basics of your sign, you can find a way to carve out a unique work-at-home experience that is enjoyable and positive. We spoke with astrologer Jim Ventura for tips on working from home based on your zodiac sign. First up... Taurus. The Tauruses are a fixed sign, they're earth signs. Jim says they thrive on routine, so set up one at home, but... Just like if you were in the office, you definitely want to have your coffee break or your tea break, frequent stops for snacks and things to kind of replenish your energy. And if these bulls are getting antsy working in their home office... Start thinking about your next vacation. That could make Taurus very happy, <laughs> knowing there's a vacation on the horizon. Next up... Gemini. Gemini can be a bit more of a social sign. They can multitask. They're just not going to sit and work eight hours straight with one thing on their mind without losing their mind. So this air sign should juggle multiple tasks. Gemini could be working and doing a conference meeting and, you know, at the same time taking notes on something else while doing a load of laundry in the background. We're moving along to our third sign, Cancer. They are strong enough to take charge, to handle what's necessary. Cancer's a sign that already is sort of associated with the home and the family. Since this water sign is big on family. If you got a work desk to have pictures of your family, your children, whether that's your actual children or your dog or your cat, they like those warm reminders of the things that they love and that they care about. Finally, Leo. Leos are a fixed fire sign. Loyalty is a very strong characteristic. A lot of fuel for Leo is to be seen as a generous one, 
the giver, the creative one in a way. Jim says this sign will feel best dressing up for virtual meetings. You know, remember to pay attention to how you look and the way that you come across. You don't want to get sloppy. Leo doesn't like that. Didn't see your sign? Head to thelisttv.com. We're learning to work from home thanks to astrology. And there you have it. Our signs guiding us in every way from work to home. I mean, we even know what kind of cocktail goes best with your Zodiac. Well, Christine, if there's anything a Zodiac sign can't do, we haven't found it. <laughs> Thanks for watching our working show, everyone.